Hi, this is Dr. Sridhar. We are to you with another video session on types of losses occurs in the DC machine and how can we calculate the efficiency and what is the effect of these losses on calculation of efficiency and what is the condition to achieve the maximum efficiency of a DC machine. So, this maximum efficiency condition holds good for either generator or for motor also. This maximum efficiency we can also derive in terms of the losses and in terms of the voltage also. These are the basically uh, the important topics we are going to cover in today's video session. So, broadly if you are calculating or if you are classifying the losses, these losses are classified into constant losses and variable losses. In its name only constant losses means which always remains irrespective of the loading conditions on the DC machine. So, the constant losses means either at uh, no load conditions or 10 percentage of the maximum load or 20 percentage or 50, 70, whatever it may be. Now, it never depends on the loading conditions. So, load means that is in proportion to that particular load. Now, if you are taking a motor, now in case of motor, what happens if the load is gradually increasing? Load is gradually increasing, increasing means how it will affect on the supply electrical energy means proportional to the loads, now the total motor or armature of that particular motor is going to draw maximum amount of current. That maximum amount of current is in the sense that will be indirect in proportional to the loading conditions. So, if the load on the DC motor is increasing, then proportional to that what happens that the armature of the DC motor is going to draw maximum amount of current from the supply. So, this is a simple relation between the loading conditions and the supply current. Now, in this total process, never the voltage, in majority of the cases, voltage will remain same. But proportional to the loading, always that armature is try to compensate the loads or try to meet the loading conditions. So, how that armature is going to meet the loading conditions means, now in proportion to that load, how much of load we are actually keeping on that armature or especially if we are talking on the shafts, now, in order to meet that external extra amount of loads, how much that motor or uh, shaft is going to observe that will be compensated or that will be met by drawing excess amount of current. Excess amount of current means in proportion to the loads, the total armature will collect or will observe or will uh, try to get uh, that excess amount of current from the source. So, this is nothing but loading condition. What exactly how can we define the loading conditions means? Now, that load, extra amount of load, it will be compensated by drawing. Who will draw? That armature will draw. The armature will draw from the source. Now, in proportion to the load, how much of load we are going to keep on the DC motor. So, if any loss is irrespective of this uh, loading conditions, those losses are called as a constant losses. Now, and one more loss. Now, if any loss is in proportion to the loading conditions, those losses are called as a variable losses. Means simply one thing we can remember that if any loss is a function of the load, if a parameter, the loss is nothing but it is a power loss. If power loss is a function of the loading condition, then those losses are called as variable losses. If any power loss is not a function of the loading condition, those losses are called as constant losses. So, the example for the constant losses are iron losses, one more name for this is magnetic losses, those are nothing but hysteresis and eddy current losses and next one is the mechanical losses. What do you mean by that mechanical losses? Mechanical losses are nothing but because of the air, because of the friction among the mechanical parts or sometimes there will be a friction between air and the some mechanical parts. So, suppose if the armature, if the rotating part of the DC motor is rotating in the clockwise direction, suppose there may be a chance of flowing of or blowing of that particular air may be in the opposite direction. So, that air will also create some frictional forces or in order to overcome that air friction or windage losses, that motor has to spend some excess amount of energy or power which is nothing but mechanical losses. These mechanical losses are classified into air friction and windage losses. And one more loss is nothing but the shent field losses. 
shent field copper losses more exactly if you are speaking now what do you mean by shent field copper losses means suppose if you are taking a shent motor in the shent motor means now this would be a armature and this is nothing but the shent field winding and here i am applying some voltage and this current is nothing but the line current i and there will be a back emf this is eb and it will have some internal resistance ra and this is nothing but rsh so the supply voltage and this armature and the field coil are these three are in par uh, proportion parallel to each other so what will be the current entering into this shent field winding that current can be calculated as v by rsh v by rsh what is this v now just now also we told that we discussed that v is nothing but in the majority of the cases it remains constant so whatever this rsh for a particular machine this will also remains same suppose if you are ignoring this hysteresis losses then this rsh uh, means hysteresis loop in the majority of the cases we can also uh, assume that shent field resistance is also a constant value then whatever this ish ish is nothing but it will also remains constant so whatever the shent field copper losses shent field copper losses is nothing but ish square into rsh is nothing but the shent field copper losses so if ish and rsh remain same then the shent field copper losses will also remain same but there are some uh, assumptions that in the majority of the cases only shent field copper losses are remain constant but more exactly if you are uh, talking more uh, predominantly about the shent field windings this will also be variable but in the majority of the cases the shent field copper losses can also be uh, treated as a constant losses that is uh, my intention here coming to this variable losses the, uh, now just now also we have discussed what uh, could be the definition for this variable losses means the losses which vary with the load are called variable losses means any loss suppose now this pl is nothing but it is a power loss then if it is a function of load and along with this if there are some other parameters also there then here if load varies then proportionally the losses proportional losses will also vary so it means this losses are nothing but the variable losses so variable losses are the losses which depends on the loading condition so this may be 1 percentage at 10 percentage of the load now if the load is increased from 10 to 20 percentage proportionally losses will also vary so the, those are losses are nothing but the variable losses the may, uh, best example for this variable losses are nothing but armature copper losses means copper losses occurs in the armature winding and copper losses occurs in the series field winding so why this uh, series field winding is uh, termed as a variable and shent field losses are uh, termed as a constant losses that sense to difference let us uh, discuss now here this armature copper loss is nothing but i a square r a now it is very clear that now if proportional to the load if load increases then just now also we discussed that line current will also increase now what is the formula for this i l i l is nothing but i a plus i s h what is this i a that is the armature current means the armature how much current uh, it is going to collect from the line current means that is ia and ish is nothing but it is a field current now just now also we had discussed ish is nothing but almost of all not 100% almost of all it remains constant now proportional to the load if the line current varies then proportional to that what happens ia will also vary so because of that we can assume that armature copper loss is a variable loss and suppose in the series machine now here in this particular shent motor you may not get any series field winding but in the series motor suppose if you are taking a series motor like this now this is the series field winding and this is the supply voltage and this current is nothing but the line current and this is the r series so here in this case what is the formula here il and i series remain same if proportional to the load if il is goes on increasing or decreasing with respect to the load proportional to that what happens series current also increases or decreases then if the series current increases whatever the associated power losses those associated power losses are i square series into r series so in view of this now these copper losses occurs in the series field winding is assumed to be a variable losses so 
in any machine you will get three types of copper losses one copper loss is occurs in the armature one copper loss occurs in the series field winding one copper loss occurs in the shunt field winding but out of these three copper losses now shunt field winding is in the majority of the cases this loss can be uh, assumed as a constant loss and remaining two losses series field winding loss, copper losses and the copper losses occurs in the armature are termed as a variable losses so because uh, our intention in this uh, today's video session is we are going to calculate the efficiency so before calculating efficiency one should know now how that power it will be transformed from the input terminals to the output terminals now this dc machines already we know that we have classified this dc machines into two broad areas dc generator and the dc motor dc generator is nothing but it is a device it is a transducer which converts mechanical energy into the electrical energy so how this mechanical energy uh, whenever it is transforming from its input terminals of the dc machines now to the output terminals how that mechanical energy it will be transformed to the electrical and what are the seeds for various losses means suppose now in the previous slide we have discussed about various losses now magnetic losses mechanical losses and uh, variable copper losses these are the losses we have discussed now at, at what exactly at which point of that particular machine these losses are going to take place that we are going to observe with the help of these simple diagrams now first let me take a generator here now if you are taking a generator in this one the input power is nothing but mechanical power input because already we know that now generator is a device which converts mechanical power to the electrical power now this is the electrical power so this is the mechanical input mechanical power as a input and electrical power as a output so p in is nothing but now already we know that power is nothing but omega into torque omega is nothing but the angular velocity and torque is nothing but apply torque in case of a generator because now generator means uh, we have to feed the mechanical input power so how we are going to apply the mechanical input power means proportion to that mechanical input power we are we have to uh, apply that mechanical input power to the shaft terminals means uh, with the help of some uh, prime mover or uh, turbine kind of thing you have to rotate that uh, shaft of the dc generator so with what velocity the shaft is going to rotate which is nothing but omega and how much of twisting force you have applied the product between angular velocity and the twisting force which is nothing but the torque will always gives as a power so here mechanical power more exactly here in this one mechanical power is it will be an input for the dc generator so that is the reason omega into t applied t is nothing but torque applied is nothing but so we are going to apply that mechanical input power so proportional to that mechanical input power how much of torque you have to rotate or with what the external force the shaft of the dc generator has to rotate which is nothing but the torque applied omega m is nothing but mechanical angular velocity so like this we can easily compute how much of mechanical input power we are going to apply to the dc generator so this is this much of power input we are giving to that so mechanical input to power we are applying to the shaft from the shaft to the armature that mechanical input power has to flow so in this process so what happens shaft to the armature there will be a mechanical bracing so in this one what happens whenever a rotating body or any mechanical body is rotating so definitely there will be a mechanical losses those losses are nothing but the frictional losses and windage losses and some stray losses those are nothing but core losses or sometimes these are also called as a magnetic losses these are the losses drawn, takes place now this whatever the seat means that is nothing but whenever the power is transforming from shaft to the armature now this many number of losses it is going to take place now next one is mechanical power uh, converted to the electrical power now who will take the responsibility here so in order to convert uh, the mechanical power to the electrical power now first of all you have to create or establish two magnetic fields i mean to say that a strengthened highly magnetic field because of the north pole and south pole now that uh, north pole and south pole we are going to induce 
along with the field coils so that field coils will induce that magnetic uh, poles so between this north pole and south pole you can see some magnetic field inside that magnetic field you keep a conductor and if the conductor is rotated with certain velocity or if you could develop the relative motion between the magnetic field and the armature conductor then automatically we can observe some amount of emf it will be induced in the conductors which conductor armature conductor so how we are developing the relative velocity between the magnetic field and the armature conductor means already we are injecting mechanical power mechanical power how we are applying to the dc generator so we are going to revolve the shaft in a particular direction that uh, with a velocity of omega m so like this we are going to rotate the armature which is nothing but the armature conductor in a magnetic field now this is enough to develop some amount of electrical energy as per faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction so whenever in a stationary magnetic field a armature conductor is rotated with some velocity so as per faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction we can observe some amount of electrical emf it will be induced in the conductor so this is the process it is going to take place between shaft and the output terminals so this is nothing but how much of power it is going to convert means how much of mechanical power it is going to convert into the electrical power so that is nothing but omega m is because with what velocity the shaft is rotating with the same velocity armature will also rotate so that is why omega will remain same only that is nothing but induced torque how much of torque it will be induced so that is nothing but the torque and because of this what happens so proportional amount of uh, electrical output power we can observe here so more exactly across the armature how much of uh, electrical power means generated voltage are induced in mf eg and current is nothing but the i n so here no more this mechanical terms remain uh, constant because omega t induced is not required because here this is the area in which this total power mechanical power it is going to convert it into the electrical power so how much of electrical power means eg into i a so this is nothing but the power available equivalent to the mechanical converted in electrical so that value is nothing but the eg into i a then again from here to the output terminals it has to go so that's why here and what are the losses here there will be some various electrical losses like uh, various copper losses because if it is a shunt motor shunt field copper losses will be there if it is a series motor uh, now series field copper losses will be there suppose if it is a uh, compound motor now uh, two types of losses it will be taken place so this losses which will be computed by taking the square of the current into resistance those losses are nothing but the electrical losses then so how much of power it will be generated in the armature then uh, by subtracting electrical losses from the generated power you will get the output power so p output is nothing but generated power is nothing but the terminal voltage vt into load current il so this is the process how this mechanical energy is converted into the electrical power now one more device we know that that is a power stages in a dc motor how that uh, uh, stage to stage or step by step uh, how that electrical power is going to convert into the mechanical power in the dc motor now here electrical power is nothing but p input is nothing but v into into il so same if you could uh, observe this mechanical uh, flow of energy in the dc generator it is more or similar from input to output and output to input the losses will also same and everything is same only the flow of energy flow of power it will be reversed vice versa it is going to take place in the dc motor here electrical power which is nothing but the inputs in the dc generator this will be outputs and output to the converting stage now there will be electrical losses now input to the converting stage there will be electrical losses same only the flow of uh, power it will be reversed now this is nothing but the various power stages involved in the generator as well as in the motor so again more exactly if you are taking a uh, generator uh, stages now what types of losses it is going to takes place so mechanical power inputs there are some mechanical losses now magnetic losses or iron losses and load losses strain load losses these are the three powers three different types of losses it is going to takes place before coming to the electrical power developed across the armature from armature onwards there are three different types of losses armature copper loss shunt and series copper loss then finally you will get the 
output electrical power. Already we have given in a uh, broad view and for better understanding one more slide I have kept. Now here also power stages in motor. So electrical power input is nothing but the mechanical power developed. So between them. So this is nothing but the conversion uh, power. So means proportional to the input proportional to the input quantity there will be a conversion. So before go, uh, before the conversion takes place now various types of losses series copper losses, shent copper losses, armature copper losses. Then again this converted power whenever it is going to reach the output terminals there are different types of mechanical losses and uh, magnetic losses and uh, stray load losses. So these are the various stages involved in the DC generator and the DC motor. And one important thing we had to remember that either it is a generator or motor if you are confident on one machine now if you could take the vice versa of that now we will we are going to get the power stages involved at various levels in another machine. So in the first slide of today's video session we have classified the losses into constant losses and variable losses. Now here also one more type of classification uh, I am giving that losses are nothing but can be classified into copper losses. Of course whether it is constant or variable it is immaterial here but based on the copper losses now again copper losses are uh, defined into or again furtherly it will be classified into three more categories that is armature copper loss, shent copper loss and series field copper loss. And one more is nothing but that is uh, magnetic losses. Magnetic losses those are nothing but again there are two types of magnetic losses are there. Sometimes these are also called as iron losses. Now these are nothing but the hysteresis losses and eddy current losses. And one more loss is nothing but the mechanical losses. Just now also we have discussed that air friction losses and windage losses. So frictional losses and windage losses. Frictional losses where exactly it is going to take place. The seat also have men uh, mentioned here uh, because majority of them they don't know uh, various parts of the DC machine never uh, they have practical experience. So, so that's why I want to give some uh, the point more exactly at which the losses is going to take place. Mechanical losses are nothing but these are the losses occurs at brushes and bearings and windage losses between starter and rotor in the polyphase machines. Uh, now in here in this DC machine this windage losses will take place between starter and armature. These are the various windage losses and one more category is nothing but the straight load losses, stray iron and stray copper. So these are nothing but copper losses and the magnetic losses are collectively called as the strain load losses. Now one more category is nothing but the mechanical losses. The strain load losses is nothing but it is by taking the sum of magnetic losses those are nothing but iron losses and the copper losses these two can be called as the strain load losses because and again here hysteresis losses uh, uh, we have separate formulas to calculate the various power losses. Now comes under hysteresis losses and eddy current losses. Let us discuss about what exactly this hysteresis losses is. As a part of the DC generator and the motor in our previous uh, videos we have discussed elaborately what is that hysteresis and what are the causes for this hysteresis loss and what is eddy current and what are the causes and how these two losses can be minimized by taking uh, some uh, remedial steps at the armature and uh, by adding some special type of material to the construction of this armature. These are the things already we have discussed. Now here whenever sometimes what happens we had to calculate associated with this hysteresis and eddy current losses. Now at this at that particular moment now we may get or we may be in need of certain formulas of hysteresis and eddy current losses. The, so there are there is one simple formula available for us from the literature that is hysteresis loss wh is equal to neta into b maximum power 1.6 f into v. This neta is nothing but it is a Steinmetz hysteresis coefficient it uh, depending on the material. Suppose if the material changes from one to another then the Steinmetz constant will also ch changes. So more uh, predominantly this neta will uh, be ranged from 1.5 to 2.5. Now they will give this value or else otherwise also you can approximate the neta between 1.5 to 2.5 because uh, why it is a varying because uh, we are saying that it is a constant and it is a constant absolutely there is no doubt at all 
but the problem is it will vary from material to material now that range of materials uh, used for the construction of certain parts of this uh, dc machines now those materials have the range of values from 1.5 to 2.5 based on the material so f is nothing but it is a frequency of magnetic reversal per second and v is nothing but the volume of the magnetic material generally uh, we used to represent v for the voltage but here this is nothing but how much of volume because this hysteresis and eddy current losses more exactly it takes place in the armature so how much of volume that armature is having that is a matter here so that v is nothing but the volume of the magnetic material in meter cube and one more thing is nothing but the b max b max is nothing but the maximum flux density in webers per meter square so this is about the wh hysteresis loss and one more loss is nothing but the eddy current losses eddy current loss is nothing but the one more constant ke that is eddy current constant into b square max f square v square t square so here v is same that is a volume and t is nothing but the thickness of the material so uh, this total armature has to be divided into various segments now what could be the thickness of every section that t is nothing but the thickness here f is nothing but as usually frequency of magnetic reversal per second that is hedges and b is nothing but the maximum flux density here not b it is a b max b max is nothing but the maximum flux density and ke is nothing but the eddy current constant so this eddy current loss is directly proportional to square of the uh, frequency so it is nothing but square of the frequency is nothing but square of the speed so b, uh, we is directly proportional to f square or this is directly proportional to n square and here in the hysteresis loss wh is directly proportional to f so except this the remaining things almost of all we can assume as a constant this we is directly proportional to f square and wh is directly proportional to f this two relations will highly helpful for us in separating the losses suppose now people will say that in a particular dc machine there uh, there were 100 watts of iron losses and and this uh, frequency of that operation is nothing but at certain 50 hertz of the frequency means how many times this reversal is taking place is 50 hertz so based on these two simple information we must be in a position to separate how this 100 watt of uh, power loss can be shared and in that 100 watt what could be the Uh, proportion of hysteresis loss and what could be the contribution of eddy current losses so how these uh, could be calculated means with the help of these simple formulas we is directly proportional to square of the frequency and wh is directly proportional to the square uh, supply frequency and now just now we have discussed about various losses and uh, various formulas available for us to calculate hysteresis and eddy current losses and in continuation to that efficiency also we had to calculate before going into the efficiency first of all what could be the voltage condition for maximum output power so in order to achieve or in order to get the output power maximum what could be the value so first let me uh, write the one simple formula that what is the output power so output power is nothing but the now if you are taking uh, a dc motor in the dc motor output power is nothing but the mechanical output power so mechanical output power is nothing but in terms of the electrical quantities this can be written as v into ia now here not exactly ia here that ia is nothing but that uh, again it is more or less equivalent or this is approximately equivalent to the line current only so v into ia minus square of the loss that is nothing but the armature copper loss so the mechanical output power can be approximately represented as electrical input minus the armature now armature copper loss so that is mechanical input power is nothing but uh, sorry mechanical output power is pm and electrical input is nothing but the v into ia minus ia square ra is nothing but this is the mechanical out power output and here v and ra are fixed only power developed by the motor depends on the armature current because this voltage is almost equal constant and ra is nothing but armature resistance now we are not going to change the machine so till that particular resistant ra can be assumed as a constant so what about the remaining variable parameter ia so when this output power it will be maximum 
means dpm by dia because this power outputs the mechanical or output power definitely it is a function of current only which current armature current so let me take the first order differentiation dpm by dia is equal to voltage v minus 2 into ia into ra so in order to achieve the maximum value so this first order term first order differential equation it must be equated to zero so if you are simplifying this equation ia ra it is equal to the v by 2 and also we know one more equation that the supply voltage is equal to ep plus ia ra back emf plus ia ra so this is nothing but ia ra is nothing but this will be v by 2 because this is the condition to get the maximum output power so ep plus v by 2 or uh, v is equal to eb plus v by 2 means how much of back emf means eb is equal to v minus v by 2 which is nothing but the v by 2 so that is mechanical power developed by the motor is it will be maximum when the back emf is equal to the half of the applied voltage so this is the condition to achieve that eb is equal to v by 2 eb is nothing but the back emf developed by the armature in the dc motor if it is equal to the half of the supply voltage then the mechanical power output is nothing but the, that will remains maximum that is a condition here so ia at maximum output power is nothing but v by 2 ra now if you are from this particular equation ia at the uh, proportional to the maximum output power it will be equal to v by 2 ra so that is nothing but maximum power output also if you can take that is the maximum mechanical output power pm is equal to now if you are simplifying here via minus ia square ra now if you are substituting this particular condition that is ia as v by 2 ra that is v into v by 2 ra minus ia square ra so this is v square by 2 ra minus v into v by ra so finally how much we are going to get v square by 4 ra so that is nothing but 50 percentage so efficiency is nothing but output power to the input power so it will remains only 50 percentage so v by 2 ra by v by uh, 4 ra so v into v by 2 ra divided by v into v by 4 ra so finally v square by 4 ra v square by 2 ra so remaining only 50 percentage so this is the condition for uh, maximum output power so this is in terms of the voltages and currents so one more derivation that is uh, first let us calculate what is the efficiency of a dc motor so input power is nothing but now let me take a dc motor only now this same concept but only input it will be changed to the output and output will be becomes input in the generator that's only the difference otherwise everything is same so for a dc motor if you are taking input power is nothing but the electrical power input that is voltage into current and only the uh, power developed across the armature is nothing but back emf into armature current so output power is nothing but mechanical power developed across the armature minus losses those are nothing but uh, constant losses those constant losses are nothing but in the armature what type of losses it is going to take place those are nothing but the magnetic losses or iron losses so output power across the armature that is nothing but mechanical power minus wc and p output is nothing but v into i minus i s square r a minus w c so i s square r a is nothing but those are nothing but the constant losses minus w c sorry variable losses minus w c is nothing but it is a constant loss so this p out p output is nothing but now here it is very simple uh, let me explain here simply let's we are applying electrical input power so this is nothing but electrical input power now once this electrical input power now this conversion can be in two times now in the motor what happens electrical losses electrical losses and once this electrical losses are ignored conversion power it will be developed so what is this conversion power that is nothing but eb into i so finally you will get the electrical sorry mechanical output power this is the mechanical output power so how many types of losses it is going to take place here the losses are nothing but the air friction and windage losses air friction and windage losses these can be termed as a constant losses so mechanical power developed so that mechanical power developed that is nothing but the eb into ia minus mechanical output power so that is nothing but the p output is nothing but 
In what way these two are different? Only by means of WC. That is the expression I am writing here. So, P output is nothing but the mechanical power developed across the armature minus constant losses. The constant losses are nothing but the air friction and windage losses. Now, finally, the relation between the input and output is nothing but now from here to here if you are taking. So, electrical input and the mechanical output. How many types of losses are going to take place? Electrical losses. That electrical losses are also three types. But for our simplification, I am taking I S square R A, which is nothing but armature copper loss. These are nothing but the variable losses. So, electrical input minus this electrical losses minus constant losses is equal to output power. So, that is nothing but how much of input, electrical input minus I S square R A minus W C, it will be mechanical output P output. That is the expression I am writing here. But this is nothing but approximate losses. This is a more exactly, these are nothing but the electrical losses means uh, shent field copper loss and uh, uh, series field copper loss and armature copper loss. And more predominantly armature copper loss is uh, very important because if this current is nothing but in proportion to the supply current which is nothing but the I. That is uh, what I have taken here this I square into R A. But there are other two losses that we have not considered for the simplicity of the power equation. Those losses are nothing but the copper losses in the shent and series field. Just now also we have discussed this. So, what is the condition for maximum efficiency? We know the efficiency formula that is uh, already, let us uh, recollect some of the important points here. Generator output is nothing but V into I and uh, generator input, uh, generator output is equal to V into I. Now here, uh, let us take the generator. Now generator input is equal to output plus losses and V I plus I square R A plus W C, these are nothing but the inputs. How this input is uh, spreading to the output. So, output is nothing but V into I because in the generator output is electrical. Now, here just like uh, in the previous slide we have discussed about the motor. Here if you take the generator. So, this is nothing but the mechanical input. This is the mechanical input and there are some losses and this is nothing but the electrical output. So, what is this? Uh, how this mechanical input and electrical output are related means here at this point you will get electrical losses. That electrical losses means for simplification you can take I S square R A and at the beginning there would be mechanical losses that is nothing but the W C. That is the same thing here. Input is nothing but input is nothing but this one W C plus electrical losses which is nothing but I S square R A plus electrical output. Electrical output is nothing but the voltage into current. That is that is the expression we have written here. And V A plus I S square R A plus W C. Now in this one. I A armature current and more uh, more or less this current can be taken as the output current because only these two are different. This I A is nothing but this is the load current plus I S H. So, I S H is nothing but the very small because that R S H is nothing but the very very larger for a constant voltage. So, this I S H can be ignored or not especially ignored. But this current is nothing but very, very small. So, IA current and the in output current more or less same. So, that is why assuming IA is equal to IE since ISH is very small as compared to the IE. So, this is the simplified expression for the input and efficiency is nothing but the power output to the power input. Now, efficiency is equal to V into I by VI plus IA square RA plus WC and if you are simplifying this whole expression, now here IA square RA I have replaced as I square RA. And if you are dividing this total expression with V A the in the denominator and in the numerator, so this will be 1 by 1 plus I R A by B plus W C by V A. So, to obtain the maximum efficiency, the denominator should be minimum. So, this is the denominator, this is the total expression is 1 plus I R A by V plus W C by V A. So, this must be minimum. So, minimum means under worst case it must be 0. So, if you are differentiating this equation d by d i of 1 plus i r a by v plus w c by v i. So, here also you have to differentiate this equation with respect to the current i because it is a variable parameter because with respect to the load. Now, if the load increases or decreases proportional to that efficiency will also vary. So, load means not exactly uh, which parameter we are going to take. So, the load is uh, no need to take the complete load proportional to that load how much of uh, current it will be drawn. 
in order to meet that particular load let us take that quantity so current i is nothing but proportional to the load so if the load is varying efficiency will vary so if the load varies proportional to that load which parameter we are going to assume means that is a current so that's why let us differentiate this total expression with respect to the current because we want to uh, imply what could be the loading conditions so in order to achieve the maximum efficiency what should be the power losses associated power losses so it is nothing but if you are simplifying this 0 plus r a by b plus w c by v into this i is in the denominator so this is nothing but minus minus w c by v into minus 1 by i square is equal to 0 now if you are simplifying this equation r a by v is equal to w c by v i square v anyhow the majority of the case is constant so finally if you are simplifying this equation w c is nothing but i square r a so the efficiency is maximum when i square r a is equal to w c i square r a is nothing but the various uh, variable copper losses and w c is nothing but it is a constant losses so this is the condition in terms of the power losses in terms of the variable losses and the copper losses so whenever this condition holds good or suppose if you want to achieve the maximum efficiency what could be the condition you have to satisfy means that variable losses are equal to the constant losses then automatically the efficiency of that particular motor or generator it will be maximum and also one more condition we have studied in today's video session that is in terms of the voltages if the back emf is equal to half of the supply voltage there also uh, output power will be maximum so two conditions we have studied this is the condition for maximum efficiency and eb is equal to v by 2 is nothing but that is the condition for maximum output so in this we like this uh, we can conclude uh, this today's video session that is we have studied about the various uh, losses and what are the uh, constant losses and what are the variable losses what are the various conditions to achieve the maximum efficiency and maximum output power thank you for watching this video thank you very much like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates